Hi there, of course, that's right, great and glorious, simply famous one day, Nick Dutch back on the camera again one more time. Hi there, how the heck's it going? Um, still reading through the book by good authors, but with a bit of a new agey, not very nice title, if you get my drift. I mean, I don't, I, I, because of the poor quality of writing and poor quality of science that goes into a lot of new age books to make claims that they've, you know, got the secrets of this, that and the other, uh, I tend to gloss over them. But this particular book, it does stand out from the crowd, and there's a bit more uh, information here than is in the average New Agey book, so to speak. Uh, Isaac and Sargent, I mentioned them in the previous video. They're basically preeminent psychologists and scientists, and I've given you the Wikipedia links on the previous video. If I remember, I'll include them on this one as well. But if I don't, then you know, don't have a go. I've got a very busy schedule. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is run down some of the basic information that they've given about one particular experiment that's been done into ESB type phenomena. It's, it, it gets more nuanced, it gets more complex uh, with, with passage of time. Some of you people out there may already realize that there's more than one reason that I'm doing this. Uh, I personally have a certain conviction that with further research and investigation, uh, the as it were, technology of psi or psychic phenomenon could have very serious implications for human communication, human health, and possibly even defense to a certain degree. Uh, and as a result of that, it is a important subject. But I'm still a relatively lay person, but not quite that lay if you get my drift. So I'm going to just, just tell you about this. But before I do that, just think for a minute. If you were a scientist investigating any phenomena and there was a phenomenon that you wanted to investigate that could only be investigated with the help of statistical analysis and you had performed a very good experimental design, you've made sure that your control condition is impeccable and that there's nothing which could interfere with it. You've collected your results perfectly from your control condition. And then in your experimental condition, you've only got the one extra factor, just the one extra factor you wish to test there. And you have a sufficiently large sample and you apply the right data to it. If you get a statistically significant result, then the chances of that particular phenomena in your experimental design actually being real is substantially higher than just chance. And if you're a scientist, you would essentially be forced to accept that. And if there was a vast body of hundreds or possibly thousands of similar experiments conducted by independent scientists throughout the world, independent accredited scientists throughout the world, you would have to consider this to be a large body of scientific information which would essentially go some way towards demonstrating the veracity, the truth, about that particular phenomenon. You would just have to accept it. But essentially, that's what's already out there. The, the information is literally already out there. Okay, on with the subject of the experiment. This, is, this was done by Dr. Helmut Schmidt, who worked for Boeing in the, I think it was the 1960s. He created, he created an automated PSI or Psi testing machine which generated random numbers and registered the guesses and recorded what the guesses were. The whole purpose of the machine was designed to eliminate errors of recording and inconsistencies of method and other basically minor issues. And it was based upon strontium-90 and it would uh, involve a, a Geiger counter, the strontium-90 radioactive sample, and there will be some complex machinery which will then select numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, depending upon uh, the particles that were emitted from the strontium-90. It was basically a perfect random number generator. All right? And it was put through a lot of trial runs and was proven to be perfectly random. Okay? The purpose of the machine was to test um, precognition, or PK, which is to guess which uh, numbered light would come up or 
to see which ones you can make light up in accordance with your own will. And subjects would press a button to register their, um, their guesses and the machine was programmed to ignore pressing of two or more buttons at the same time, either by error or deliberately. So that's another variable which was taken out of the equation. And now, although uh, Schmidt found one subject who scored at a rate of 100,000 to 1 probability above chance, that subject unfortunately had to move away uh, for work purposes. So he then chose three more subjects. One was um, uh, a medium, one was a psychic um, skill, psychic development trainer, and a third was an amateur psychic. Uh, the total number of guesses that these three people were put through was 63,066. And the, of course the chance score is 25%, so we're talking about you know, four different choices that you can make on this one particular machine. And so, therefore, the chance score would be 15,766 correct guesses. But the actual correct guesses were 16,458, being 700% more than chance would predict. And the odds against this uh, being approximately or above 100 million to 1. So, that's actually quite a substantial result that Schmidt managed to get there. Uh, he then tried again, and this time he asked the subjects to deliberately score high or deliberately score low. So he was telling the subjects to try to get even more positive scores or even more negative scores. And there's a rationale for this, with, uh, and, and also why um, Isaac and Sargent is telling us about this, because there's uh, an investigation into things which are positive to and things which are detrimental to psychic phenomena as well. And it does seem to be the development of a unifying theory of psychic phenomena. But anyway, that's another issue. As far as the results of um, telling these people to score extra high, a score of 26% was gained, so it's obviously above the 25%. And when they were told to score low, a score of 24% was gained. Now, considering the size of the samples which Schmidt worked with, that is astronomically against chance, if we were to think about a figure to one, it's just way off the scale. Okay, he tried the same with a pre-recorded sequence of outcomes that was recorded on, uh, on ticker tape and put through the machine. So that was more to test clairvoyance, to see whether these people had some kind of... Uh, ability to be able to tell what had already come to pass rather than what was about to come to pass. And the results above chance was 250,000 to 1. Now this is fascinating and if you personally were, um, you know, a proper scientist, you know, a proper, 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 proper scientist with all of your qualifications and all the rest of that, your own laboratory somewhere, you know, in the middle of nowhere with all the funding to do all the research and write all the papers that you wanted to. And you came across results like this from just this one particular experimenter. That would make you think. And what it would make you think is there's something interesting going on here because the results are not purely due to chance.